Okay, so we have to calculate the pH of a 0 0.20 molar solution of NH4Br, and you need to show your work clearly. So what they've presented is basically they're saying that NH4Br is an acidic salt, and then it will react with water under hydrolysis, right? So first of all, what is hydrolysis? So it's the reaction of water, and water is the, is the reagent that is responsible for breaking the bonds of whatever reactant it gets paired with. So that's what hydrolysis is, and it forms NH3 and HDO+, which we know is the hydronium ion, which is right. And then it says before you can actually solve for the pH, you need to first figure out what the concentration is of H3O+, right? There should be a plus here. And in order for you to do that, you need to find the Ka of NH4+, which is the ammonium ion. And if you do have the Kb expression, okay, so this is where things... Um, switch from Ka to Kb, right? So for this question, first of all, you need to be given your Ka for NH4 plus or your Kb for NH3. So either one is fine. And then the way that you're supposed to solve it is dependent on whether you're starting off with NH4 plus. Does that make sense? Okay, so bear with me. I know we still have like five minutes left, but I want to get through this question. So Let's just deal with this. Okay, so we have to find the pH of NH4Br. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have what you call your ammonium and your Br minus in this case, right? So this is NH4 plus and you have Br minus. So we know that this NH4 plus is, so if you, if you see the 0 0.20 molar, that means that's your concentration for NH4 plus. And how do I know that? Well, we know that for this NH4 Br, right? So what this answer is saying, it's an acidic salt, right? So first we have to figure out whether it's truly an acidic salt, right? So that means the pH is acidic, right? Lower than seven. So how do you even figure that out? Where, well, in this case, you have NH4 and Br, right? So the whole assumption here is you need to think about if NH4 Br is a strong electrolyte, meaning it's going to undergo hydrolysis, right? Which they mentioned. But then the problem here is if you look at Br minus, we know that HBr is actually very acidic, right? It's one of the seven strong acids. That means this will not undergo hydrolysis, right? So first of all, there's two important points that you have to remember. So if your anion is part of one of your strong acids, so let's say if you have Cl minus and it gets paired with H, right, which is hydrochloric acid, HCl, if it forms a strong acid, that means this anion will not undergo hydrolysis. Does that make sense? And then if you have NH4+, plus, right, because even though this is a cation, but it's not a metal, right? So in that case, this means it can undergo hydrolysis, right? So we have NH4+, plus, and you have water. So this is just your Bronsted, Lowry, acid and base equation, right? So, so we have water and then we have NH3, which is ammonia, which is the base. And then we have H3O plus, right? How do I know it's H3O plus? Well, this is your acid, right? From this, from this equation. And then this is your base, which is water. Now what's your conjugate acid? Conjugate acid would be, so CA is H3O plus and NH3 is your conjugate base. Does that make sense? So that means if you have H3O plus here, that's what you need to have that's what you need to solve for, right? Concentration of HDO plus. And that's why you know that you're going to start off with NH4 plus. So because it's an equilibrium expression, we can say that we're looking for Ka, right? So if you check your textbook, and this should be given during the test, so not to stress about, if you have your Ka, which is equal to, so for NH4 plus, the Ka is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10, right? That means when you write your equilibrium expression based on the chemical equation of NH4+, you're going to see that you can write your product over your reactants, right? So this is NH3, that's the concentration 
multiply to the concentration of H3O plus. And this is all over the concentration of your product, which is NH4+. And first of all, you're probably wondering, or in case you might forget, that if you're looking at H2O, we know that this is in a pure liquid form, right? It's not really affecting your equilibrium constant or your expression. So that's why we don't have it right here, because it's equal to 1, right? That's the concentration. Okay, so you're going to set up your ice table here, but we can just assume that because you only have one mole of NH3 right here, and you have one mole of H3O plus, that means you can actually say that this is X squared, right? So this is X squared over NH4 plus. So the concentration of NH4 plus is actually equal to 0 0.20 molar, right? So we can just write that down. And then this is equal to your Ka, which is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, so I'm just dropping the molar just for simplicity. And then what I'm doing is I'm multiplying 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10 with 0 0.20. And then I'm taking the square root after that. Okay, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10 times 0 0.20. And that's equal to 1 point. So if you multiply this, you would get, z sorry, you would get 1.12. times 10 to the negative 10, and that's equal to x squared, right? And then you're taking the square root of both sides, right? So taking the square root of both sides, you would get 1.058 times 1.0583 times 10 to the negative 5, right? So in that case, you would have your x being equal to this, right? So what did we say what X was? So we said that X was NH3 and H3O+, plus, right? So we know that the concentration of H3O+, plus is this thing, right? Or this number. Okay, so once we have that, all we have to do is we have pH, which is equal to the negative log of 1.0583 times 10 to the negative 5, right? And then we, when we take the negative log of that, that should give you 4.97, which we have that right here. I've highlighted, and that's right. So this is 4.97. Taking into account the number of significant figures, which is 2, right? So 4.97. Okay, so that's the pH. And alternatively, because they brought up KB, right? So KB right here, they said it was... 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. This should be Ka, not Kb, because we're we're dealing with NH4 plus. So this is Ka, and that's equal to NH3 times H3O plus divided by NH4 plus, right? So they've pretty much done it this way, which is similar to this, but the only correction I would say is this should be Ka. But if you're given Kb, for instance, which is Kb of ammonia, right? Okay, let's scroll down. So let's say the KB of ammonia, because it's a weak base, right? So if your KB, so I haven't really written that down, but if you have this information, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, right? You still have to use your KA, right? You can't use this and be like, okay, this is my KA. No, this is KB, right? So that means you have KA, you would have to use this equation, which is KA times KB which is equal to Kw, right? Equilibrium constant for water, right? So this is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And this is equal to Ka times Kb, right? So we're solving for Ka in this case. And that's 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And then once you solve for Ka, right? So dividing both sides with 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So this is going to be equal to 5.6 times 10 to the power of 18. 
Okay, hold on. This should be, sorry, on my calculator, I have raised to the power of 14. That's why we're getting the wrong answer. Okay, now it's right. So make sure this is negative 14. Okay, so times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, that's equal to 5.6 times 10 raised to the power of negative 10. Okay, now this is consistent to what we had initially, right? As you can see here, let me just highlight that. Okay, so that's your Ka for ammonium, and that's the same thing right here. Okay, so before we wrap up, I just wanted to say thank you so much, guys, for coming in. You know, I know probably school is the last thing that's going on in your mind right now. Obviously, health and safety is first. But I guess I just wanted to instill that hopefully, and I think everyone just hopes that things will resume back to normal. And I'm just really concerned. And one class is here for you, and we're really concerned that you know you need to be on top of your studies because at the end of the day once this all goes back to normal you're going back to school and that's not the time to be prepping for your exams or your midterms okay so yeah thank you so much guys and i'll see you on my next class bye guys